be online. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Ngozi Yukazu. Um, I draw a comic called Check Please, which is the story of a former figure skater who joined the college hockey team. So hockey is my <laughs> is the sport that uh, I'm recently like involved with. I actually can't skate or play hockey. Uh, I like do love sports. I do love playing sports. And I played like a ton of intramural intramurals in college, and I played on my high school's basketball team until sophomore year when I started getting bad grades in chemistry. So I stopped. <laughs> what position do you play? Oh, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't good enough to really have a position. I was like, I was like, I was like a shooting guard, but I mean, that was just because I couldn't dribble and wasn't tall enough. <laughs> cool, we're going to online? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Ngozi Yukazu. Um, I draw a comic called Check Please, which is the story of a former figure skater who joined the college hockey team. So hockey is my <laughs> is the sport that uh, I'm recently like involved with. I actually can't skate or play hockey. Uh, I like do love sports. I do love playing sports. And I played like a ton of intramural intramurals in college, and I played on my high school's basketball team until sophomore year when I started getting bad grades in chemistry. So I stopped. <laughs> what position do you play? Oh, I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't good enough to really have a position. I was like, I was like, I was like a shooting guard, but I mean, that was just because I couldn't dribble and wasn't tall enough. <laughs> uh, that leads to my next question: What sort of research did all of you do uh, before you started this story? Oh, um, I did a ton. Um, in, in terms, of, I was in school. Um, I went to the Spanish College of Art and Design, and when I was graduating undergrad, um, I was actually looking into possibly going to pro wrestling school. There were several at the time. There was the Power Plant in Atlanta. There was Ohio Valley Wrestling, um, and I was doing. I was literally considering it, and then I'm like, well, I'm not really the most funny guy. Right? <laughs> um, so why am I? Why did I get a degree in this and it's not going to use it? So I decided to just start drawing a story about it instead. But my, a lot of my research involved was every pro wrestler autobiography you could, from Ric Flair, Bret Hart, um, there's uh, Booker T has one. Like I just read every single one. Uh, Jericho is one of my favorites. Um, and that sort of kind of got me in the state of mind of what it would be like. But also, I just kind of contributed a lot of my own experiences navigating the comic industry to the idea of how would it be for a rookie trying to become like a pro wrestling superstar and what sort of hurdles would he encounter? And I could relate to that because trying to break into comics was extremely hard for me, as I'm sure we all have our own stories with that as well too. So I just tried to relate myself and, and put myself in the position of this character as much as possible. Um, but I read every book and I looked at every documentary. And with the autobiographies, did you like, feel like you got the voice of each of the... Yeah, well, it's interesting. Some of the... The, many of the professors have writers that okay, work with yeah, them, yeah. To like, you know, <laughs> but they were really thorough and really wow. long read, many of them, um, and, and that just got me in the zone. Cool. I mean, so to piggyback off that, like, that's basically the same approach I did to uh, doing check plays. Like, again, like, I got into hockey my senior year of college, so I would basically like, go to a bunch of games. Uh, but for me, like, I was astounded when I could go to my school library and see that they had like hockey books, like hmm, like hockey and ethnography. Like like you could see them uh, like people recounting like the weird subculture of hockey. So I read uh, did, did a ton of research that way. I and I also gave a um, presentation on this yesterday, but I did a ton of interviews about um, not just hockey players, but people who are hockey adjacent. Um, like friends, yeah, hockey. <laughs> 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 like, like, the Zamboni driver. Yeah. <laughs> Freshman that I like, I was a freshman counselor. Said to be one of my freshmen who had dated a hockey player and had broken up with a hockey player. So, I lost my phone. How about figure skating? Um, I did I did a little less research on figure skating. Um, although I, I and I did know the freshman that I interviewed, she who was dating a hockey player, figure skater. Um, but I was mostly focusing on hockey because that's like the scene, that's where the uh, main character was going to into, like trying to get into that area. I feel like, isn't your story yeah. just about him? <laughs> so research, what do you have to do for that? Like, your story is just about, the story is just about like, the journey. Yeah, it's your story. It's like, primary story. <laughs> <laughs> 
So did you guys have, have conversations together about where the story was going to go beforehand, or I mean, how did that? Yeah, how did that come about? Uh, well, uh, basically, um, I, this this book is about a story that took place 15 years ago, and uh, over the years I've been uh, wanting to, to tell the story, in, 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 uh, and I didn't actually think it was a possibility to do it in, in a comic uh, graphic novel. Comic. But then I got more into the uh, graphic novel uh, scene, and, and I really pictured it, that it could be a good story to, to tell in, in this moment. Um, actually, we uh, we haven't seen each other uh, for 15 years, and uh, we just saw each other yesterday. That was the first time for 15 years we saw each other, and um, so it's, we had a great day yesterday. And so we didn't. Sonam didn't help me with the book, uh, but he he was totally an inspiration for me to, to carry on uh, as a, one of the main characters in the book. Uh, so, what do you think of it? Um, I told I, I looked at the uh, how do you say the picture or I don't look like that. Could have done a better job. <laughs> No, no, I, I think this is really, it's, it's not just about the, uh, the first ever international soccer game that took between Tibet, which is not recognized as a country, um, um, against Greenland, which also had some sort of similar attributes to it. But also I think the book also talked about his journey, first journey to Tibet, and, and, and what he saw, and then what continues to happen. Um, uh, in my homeland, uh, but uh, so it kind of, so so from that perspective, it, it really touches me when I when I read when I read through the comic book, and uh, it, it, it tells a very sad, uh, a very fun, very refreshing story. So I really liked it. It was a very different format. I, I mean, I would read the normal books or whatever, but when I saw the picture, it it, it, it lightened things up, and it, it was very 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 refreshing. Yeah. Michael, that's not how they uh, you know, jump on. <laughs> 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 it's fine. It's all good. I mean, I, I internalize it. <laughs> well, I, I can say actually also from the from the front uh, page, um, I think the, the illustrator he, he worked uh, on on this football player's uh, foot. He worked on it for for days because it wasn't in the right angle, uh, and also we had a lot of talk about his his right arm where it's supposed to be when he kicks the ball. Uh, so I think he spent a lot of time trying to capture you know, the right an anatomy in, in, in the way he's uh, kicking the ball. So you're getting a lot of feedback then. You're, yeah. 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 How, how, did he, how did he handle that? Uh, well, it's not up for discussion. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I, I, th I think he handled it quite good. You know. I had to get let go of it in the beginning because I knew that he wasn't a, a sportsman, and uh, it was other details in, in the story that he wanted to focus on. Um, so I think he captured that very, very good. Yeah. Well, there's so many sports world. Why do you think sports is a good vehicle for narrative? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, Every story that I'm working on right now has to do with sports in some weird facet. And I don't know whether it, that's because I'm obsessed with sports. It's, it is. Um, <laughs> also, I just think, I think, uh, sport, okay. I think sports are a really great vehicle for narrative because sports provide such a fantastic, um, fantastic um, intersection for so many other topics. Like, um, sports and spectacle in like, and it's also sports in the performance of like masculinity. And at first, how do you think that, um, once you made the comic, how do you think that affected the story? Do you think was, uh, well, I, I, tr I tried to, 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 um, to write my story in, a, in another form, as, in a plain story, but somehow it ended up, I, I didn't like it. After 10, 20 pages, I, I didn't really like my story, but I think the, this format gave me some kind of uh, 
uh, freedom to be creative, you know, taking some persons or characters and putting them together and even though it's it's like a it's a true it's based on a true story, I had some liberty to, to be a little more creative. And I think if I, I wrote another story I had to stick more to, you know, what happened and you know. So for me it's it's been very liberating to work in this format. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I didn't write it for, for children, but I, I heard from people that they read with their kids, uh, eight, ten years old, and they get inspired from it. So it's it's and it's quite political, and <laughs> and, and, and and you know, telling I'm not putting in anything in uh, between you know how the Chinese and Tibetan culture uh, how it all um, started out in the in the fifties. So. I think uh, I think it's uh, it's nice to hear that that you have a uh, another group. Uh. I, I remember when I first uh, got this uh, comic book. I read it, and uh, uh, first couple of pages, I'm like, oh, it's been a long time I've read Archie, so let's let's, let's take it a shot. <laughs> but but it's it was so gripping. As soon as you start reading it and you see the pictures, the the visualization and the simplicity. I was quite amazed. I was like, "King, hey, I, I need to start reading more of this. I like it now." And exactly. so, so you know, from from you know, from a very different perspective. Yeah, I think it's very refreshing. It's very it simplifies stuff. It gives you that visual. It gives you that expression. And the cool thing about sports is that in within ninety minutes, typically the average duration of time uh, each game occur, especially in football. The level of emotions going up and down, it's, 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 it, it, you can't achieve that. The highs of winning and then losing, and then you know, the sportsmanship, and then that, 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 that attachment of, of, of really going for it, and then when you lose, how do you accept that? It's, it's, it's such a wonderful medium to tell a story. So. Well, so I love that point you said. I mean, you kind of glazed over, but it's so true about how you wrote like 10 or so drafts that you weren't happy with. I totally had no idea. And I, I think even there's something to be said about that process as a writer of pushing through that feeling of this is horrible, but I think I can make it better, and then and, and refining it and, and, and kind of like polishing it. I, I totally identify with that. Because I don't think that ever goes away, no matter how much you write. I think you always have that feeling of second guessing, like or feeling like this could be stronger, or their motivations aren't coming across enough, or this scene could be written better. And so yeah, that, that just stayed with me. I mean, especially you're talking about conveying that emotion, those highs and lows. Like, hey, if you look at your first draft, you're probably like, like this is not what I was feeling. Like, maybe I have to show it. But not so, yeah. Can I just elaborate? Because when I, I, I did the manuscript, and uh, the, the, the illustrator, he did the first thumbnail of the book, I was quite surprised that I was, because it's based on my story, I was like in 80% of the, the illustrations. And I didn't really, <laughs> think that through, yeah. you know, and it, and I thought he should draw me more like Brad Pitt, <laughs> yeah. uh, but he, he was more like into, you no, know, that's how I see you, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. so anyway, um, I, I, I didn't, and then there was no turning back at that time, you know, so I think we ended up and I was part of maybe 50% of the illustrations. It's a hard sell, especially, I believe there have been attempts at it, especially in the 90s, like with wrestling or football comics that didn't quite take off like maybe these companies or publications thought they should fast enough. Um, and I think I've even heard that many people don't consider the audience that are into sports into comics. And there might be something to be said to that effect as well, too. So. Nerds don't like sports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nerd and I love sports. <laughs> Uh, no, like, to, like, hop on that, too. Yeah, it just feels like it was a weird branding thing, because a lot of the sports comics that I saw before I discovered, like, sports manga were all very, like, I think what they tried to do is the, this, it's this idea of, like, okay, comics, okay, comics are usually about superheroes, okay, if we're going to make comics about sports, we should make the athletes, like, superheroes. But instead of writing a story, so they would try to treat every like athlete kind of like Clark Kent, right. and it was this weird thing of like, that's I mean that's not re it's not realistic and it's not cool. If I actually want to see a superhero, I'll read about Superman. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I I think it's this weird mindset. Whereas 
sports movies and sports TV shows like Friday Night Lights, yeah. people can't get enough of them. Yeah. Um, like everybody seems like remember the Titans or like Creed or um, the wrestler. The wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Like, why is that? like, you can just name a ton of them. Um, and I think that's because those stories are, those narratives are about life and sports happens too. Exactly. Instead of like, oh, it's sports. And then I guess we'll have to have life on the side. So. Do any of you have fake sports or sports comics to a room full of comics fans that may not have any experience with sports whatsoever? I'll admit, I've been kind of fortunate in the sense that many comic fans I've learned are actually secretly into pro wrestling slightly. <laughs> or are always familiar with certain characters. So I've definitely left out like- Especially on Twitter. Yes! It's crazy. Friday night is just like a stream of like what's happening on Raw. Um, so I've actually been a, really surprised at the feedback from people who told me like, either that they were really into pro wrestling and so they were happy with my comic, or that they would never take ever want to watch pro wrestling that they like my comic because it's like a more maybe that's a whole form for them to take it seriously I don't know but well I, I gotta admit I, I changed my pitch because I in the beginning I, I said it was a story about establishing a football team soccer team uh, but uh, <laughs> right. I, I had to change that pitch because uh, there was no like feedback from publisher or anything so I had to change it to, this is a story about it's a unique story about um, Dreaming, fighting for your dreams, and then it started to like okay, let's hear more. And so, so I, I had to change the whole uh, the whole language about soccer and sports actually in, in, in my pitch. So that would be my advice. <laughs> Make it more universal. Yeah. 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 And, and to uh, kind of echo that, like it's almost like you have to deliver the sports secretly on the side. Because, <laughs> I mean, I've had people at conventions come up to me and say, like, oh, gee, oh, gee, oh, I can't wait to read this, and then they go off and read the comic. But usually I have to say, like, oh, there's a bit of romance in this, or there's baking, or it takes place in college, and then people are like, fine, I'll <laughs> But you really have to sometimes just attach it to something else. Okay. I'm going to switch that question up and say we just, you know, how would you pitch comics to a room full of like sports diamonds. First week, let's just say you're fighting me. You win that first match. I thought we would want to be fighting. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, I was on board till you said that. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the next week, because I'm like a villainous type of character, as opposed to fighting you in the ring, maybe I'm gonna like 
maybe I'm gonna attack your friend. Maybe I'm going to like go to your house and like crash your, destroy your car. Like, okay. it's more like there, there are different ways to just play around with the robbery versus just us fighting in the ring. And even in my last book, um, Super Preppy of Over Glory, um, it's, this, it's this heavyweight match between these two uh, wrestlers. One, the champion who's been champion for years. He's like the whole Hogan of my comic. His name's King Crown. But then there's this new cuff guy who's like the new Goldberg Brock Lesnar, like he's just crazy and like a rabid dog almost. And their fight goes outside of the ring into the audience and into the crowd and it gets more violent, there's blood. And so I just kept escalating the danger. <laughs> so I think you can play around with it, at least in the format of what I do. But I wouldn't even think with like hockey. Like, yeah. There's a lot you can do in that realm too, because you're doing this a lot of stuff out, like you said, outside. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's not just about winning and losing in the ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Question for two days, so I had a sports question. No, no. So like, I wanted it, you know, because I have plenty of Jack Please questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that um, the a great way to vary uh, the win, the wins and losses is to change the stakes of the wins and losses. Yes. Mm -hmm. That way, so it's not just like, oh no, I'm not gonna win the championship. It's like, oh no, Biddy's dad's in the crowd. Like, what does this change? Yes. Like, yeah. Kind of fixing the stakes. If you guys wrote an autobiographical comic. Um, how did you tell your story but still keep it, uh, you know, surprising or fresh towards the end of the book? Well, I, I just wanted to actually to ask uh, answer the, the other question because uh, our book is, is building up to this match, and uh, the whole pressure on this uh, game uh, if it's actually taking place, and and I think so on you can elaborate a little bit on on this winning and losing. Uh, because uh, can you tell what what happened uh, during the match? Yeah. So so just to just to be specific here, um, because as you said, like hey, how do you win or you lose? So how how you keep it excited? So uh, uh, based on this comic uh, storybook. Um, I'm in a story. Story yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So so. Uh, there was, a, there was a lot of anticipation because this was our first ever international game. Um, the other team, Greenland, was coached by Seth Piotr, which was very reputed. While we had a coach um, uh, for a very short period of time, uh, we practiced in, in India uh, with very, very limited resources. So when we played the game, we were like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna lose that, right? So that's gonna be the end of it. <laughs> But when it went in, it was just not that, it was the, the entire emotion of you going to the pitch, representing your country for the first time. So all of that emotion, I think, comes out of that comic and tells you that story. So I think, I think I, I'm not an expert, but I think whoever's writing it, I think you have to somehow have some sort of intangible emotional touch on it, like how you want to spin it from an angle, right? So, so and while we're playing the game in 25 minutes, we score our first international goal in the history. So, so, and we were just ecstatic. We were just like, what the hell just happened? Like, is it impossible? Are we winning? Why? Nothing? So, so the whole emotional ride goes on, but okay, you know, after the second half comes in, and that's when the other team starts pressuring, and that, you know, we lose the game 4-1. But, uh, but I think that entire audience and, and and all the supporters or what have you, all the fans, they were just, they were just so happy and delighted that we got an opportunity to actually come to the pitch and represent and, and, and score our first ever goal and at least in 25 minutes we were winning. Right? <laughs> so, so, and th that, that whole other side of the story makes the entire process interesting. I think. That's my, that's my take. In a way, you won. Like, well, yeah. That's a, that's a win. That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, it definitely has happened to me. Um, and it was kind of weird the first time someone told me they started watching wrestling because they had read my comic because that's like, like wow, you know, like, <laughs> like that's 
I, I think when you create something, if it compels anyone to have a response on, on, on that level, you're always like kind of taken aback as well. Uh, for me, the biggest um, compliment though is when I would meet certain pro wrestlers, and it was like, I've seen your work, or I've seen your even, and even if they can't acknowledge it because of their like WWE association, because you know they have a very tight hold on the things that wrestlers can and cannot share or endorse. Um, when a wrestler tells them they've seen my work, I'm always like, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <coughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, keep in mind when my, my book first came out, I was the crazy wrestling fan. There's just one character in my book. He's always in the audience in every match. <laughs> and I think about pro wrestling like it's a traveling show, but there are some people who are retired or maybe have some sort of like endless amount of wealth and will travel from city to city. And you see them in the background of various shows, and they start becoming famous by association as well too. Um, but yeah, all that being said, like when I I have I used to be the fan myself where I would wait outside of a show, like once the a house show, so we call it a, a, show, a wrestling show in your hometown. Once it would be done, I would be waiting outside with copies of my books, handing it to the wrestlers as they were going to their car. Or if I saw them in the airport, I would be like, always have a copy of my backpack in hand. And so I was kind of like really pushing it myself. <laughs> He comes in so anxious and not anxious, um, just overexcited, thinking he's going to come in and conquer and take over. And again, going back to my own story in comics, I kind of felt like when I first got my mini comic at the hands of a publisher, well, that was my golden ticket. And then, you know, I remember coming across some of my comic idols and them not living up to the impression I had of them from reading an article on, like, you know, Comics Alliance, or and it really kind of hitting me hard. Uh, there was it happened several times. And so, in the comic, you see that happen. You see him meeting characters that are the reason why he's a wrestler today, but realizing, oh wow, like the fantasy was actually a lot better than the reality. And I think there's a story there, um, and that you know, you, I think you probably told as well too. You know, that those losses and a lot of ways help shape you, help define you, help you know, you develop perseverance, um, and that's honestly a, a, a much more enjoyable story that I think than someone just winning. Like even just hearing you talk about like. This win will represent an entire country, like those stakes yeah. that you can't, like that's that's just, I don't know, I feel like that's the, the win or the loss. Does that ever tear you guys up as like uh, writers and artists? Like, I gotta, I gotta have them lose, but I, I you don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And it's funny because some writers are always like, oh, I love to kill my characters, and I like to make them suffer. I don't like revel in that, but I don't revel in that that much. Like, it's nice. It is like something where it's like when this character is losing, I know that it's for a purpose. Because a lot of my characters ultimately win at the end, like. But so I'm like, oh, the video feels so bad now, but they get the hug back. I'm gonna. <laughs> Series that I love, but then I have 
this comic I draw called Hyperforce Neo about these kids who live in the future who pilot mecha robots and fight aliens. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm pitching uh, this comic that's uh, a gay breakdancing comic that's like kind of 80s vibe, like black warriors, double dragon kind of vibe cool. that I'm really excited about. But it's about these two dudes, like, you know, not to tell too much, but it's about these two dudes being torn apart by a gang outbreak in their city and they have to find their way back to each other. And it's like their romance story, but at the same time, like, the pitfalls of their relationship too, and the gangs they're fighting, and a lot of dancing. So I get to draw a lot of dancing moves. So it's so different. Have you drawn any of this yet? I'll show you some. I'll show you some. I'll show you some. I'll show you some. Michael and Sam, are you? Do you think you'll continue making comics after this book? Yeah. Is there a future for you guys in the, in the medium? Well, I'm. We spent six years on on, on this book, so I'm just. Um, I have another year uh, about another Tibetan story I want to, to write, but um, I didn't progress. Uh, I'm just focusing on this book now. Yeah, we can't lose you. We want you to write more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the uh, you know market on Tibet like football stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One final question: uh, Where can people find you this weekend? Uh, at the, at the, in the library, and where can people find your work in general? Um, I'll be signing in like an hour, or whatever time it is, at 2 o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. um, in the Marriott. Um, and then I'll be also signing tomorrow, too. And I have another panel on uh, Check, Please tomorrow at a time. <laughs> Noon. 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 Thank you. I've been signing uh, today at, at 3. Marriott and also tomorrow at a uh, panel called Destination Denmark um, as well. Yeah, yeah and I'll, I'll be at table 102 um, all weekend just signing books. Right. Can we have a round of applause for our panel? Uh, from an illustration uh, viewpoint, is that um, I, in the beginning of the book, uh, I, I'm with a friend in, in, in Tibet. And we are uh, overnighting in a, in a monastery, a ramshackle monastery. And <clears throat> I, I, in this monastery, I dream that I'm coach for the Tibetan national football team. And that's what uh, becomes a reality afterwards. But uh, when we're leaving this monastery, I'm asking the, the monk who's living there, uh, we want to get the, to the uh, easiest way back to the highway, uh, to the main road. And uh, he's telling me, no, you, why would you take the easiest way? You know, you should take the most beautiful way. And then he's describing, you know, <laughs> you, yeah. you should go up this narrow path. There's like an ancient Buddha on, on, on a big rock. There's like a small river there, and you can drink from the water. And everything is so beautiful. And the illustrator, he's, he's making it very beautiful. And uh, once we get to the intersection where we can go left and right, uh, we take the easy road uh, because I, I wanted, you know, about winning and losing or taking the easy and because as a Westerner, you, you often have a tendency to to pick the, the, the easy road, not, you know, yeah. yeah. And I wanted to show that, um, you know, even though there was like a, a very nice trip for us lying in front of us, we, we wanted to go fast back to the, to the main road and, and move on. And it's later in the process of the book also that we kind of stop and realize what we're in Tibet and okay, we gotta look around, not just go from A to B in the fastest way. I think we have time for high shield. And then also the design of the characters, the elongated figures and slam dunk appeal to me as well too. It's really slam dunk is mostly funny comic. Yeah. Yeah. And also um, piggybacking on in terms of me seeing a, an athlete be represented well in a different sort of media maybe related to comics, there's that Usain Bolt video that Nike put out yeah. um, a couple months ago, actually. It's like a commercial, essentially, for Usain Bolt, but it's animated. And it's like the perfect animated athlete story to me. And I'm like, if they could just kind of, like you're saying, go back to your point, not try to make the, the athlete a superhero, just tell their story, right? Yeah. Maybe have them share a story that maybe we aren't privy to. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so. And I will quickly think about how fast. So we have like the titties. Yeah. <laughs> um, Glenn Keane, who did most of the design and animation for um, the Little Mermaid, he's doing a story about uh, doing an animation with Kobe Bryant, or they collaborated. So uh, 
that's something cool. He has like a little market mm -hmm. the Lakers. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Here's a tough one. It's just about college and hanging out and baking and like <laughs> weird stuff. Um, but even then, I try to make sure that like, my characters are moving um, and anatomy, like stuff like anatomy and learning like the language of like the hand can really inform acting too. So yeah. it's just, even if it's not sports. Um, anatomy important. I, like, I wanted to say like there's been so many manga out that I've read that aren't even sports related that you just feel like you're reading a sports novel. Like if, has anyone ever read Yakutate Japan? Um, that's basically a manga about bread making. Um, but it feels like you're reading like a shounen fighting novel. It's just like the bread's up the oven. <laughs> so and you can use anatomy's always important, it doesn't have to be sports. <laughs> Have any of you uh, 